rapper die a rapper, he dying in the sin now. <laughs> Don't y'all forget that. May God, may God have mercy on this soul. But say, I need, I need Fort Worth attention. I see, I see Fort Worth celebrate. I see a brother by the name of Yoski. I see a brother by the name of Yoski Justice. Now I think this brother just got out of jail or something. So he, he, he ain't too long ago just got out of jail. His name is Yoski Justice. And I see that there are many black people celebrating the death of Mo3. Uh, well, uh, I just want to tell Fort Worth, Texas, uh, half heck got himself killed playing gangster. <laughs> Say, y'all get Fort Worth in here for me. Say, because I think some of y'all homeboys done been killed. They killed Big Worm. <laughs> you nigga didn't do nothing. They killed Pee Wee. So, but y'all go celebrate Mo3 death. That's why I celebrate Pee Wee's death, nigga. Pee Wee was a gangster. He was a killer. Let me hush up, God. Let me, let me, let me. I, I, I don't, I don't want to say what I want to say. So I want to be able to deliver what God want me to deliver to you, hateful hearted man. Can y'all somebody tag Yoski Justy? Somebody get Dre right. Somebody get Dre right. I see they want to celebrate. See you niggas is cowards. Mm -hmm. You niggas is cowards. You niggas is cowards. Uh, you niggas is cowards, nigga. Uh, you niggas is cowards, nigga. Cause y'all won't address the man when he was alive. You niggas is cowards, nigga. Uh, uh, you niggas is cowards, nigga. Didn't you niggas, one of you niggas just got out of jail. One of you niggas' music careers flop, nigga. 5400 Dre Wright, you a coward, nigga. Uh, Yoski Justice, man, you just got out of jail, nigga. You just got out of jail leaving your kids for what, the second or third time. You nigga go, so you mean to tell me, so, Mighty fact, let me let me think. Mo three got killed in Oak Cliff, right? Mo three got killed in Oak Cliff, didn't he, y'all? What happened to them white folks when them when them Ku Klux Klan racist white people went to Oak Cliff? Did none of them die? Now I thought I thought once President Trump left, we was all gonna be all right. Niggas still killing niggas, y'all. Say, Mo3 got killed by some black, black people today, and I could have swore one of you niggas was making some Black Lives Matter posts about how, man, but y'all celebrating black people being killed by black people, but y'all complaining about President Trump, yet y'all screaming Black Lives Matter, and then y'all crying about police shootings, then y'all saying it's a revolution, but you mean to tell me you got... One side of black people, they crying for Mo3. Then you got another side of black people, they celebrating the death of Mo3. But you got some more black people saying black lives matter. Then you got some more people saying Donald Trump is racist. Now, I don't know if Donald Trump is racist or not, but I know white people isn't our problem. It's niggas like Yoski Justice. That done sold dope off in the neighborhoods, man, and celebrate a nigga death. Cause, cause that half breed nigga. Half heck wasn't no full black nigga, man. I just wanna tell y'all that. Half heck was a Mexican or something. He wasn't fully black. Half heck, uh, uh, half heck ran outside shooting in the air, playing gangster and tough. That's how half heck, that's how Mo3 them end up popping half heck. Y'all, they set Mo3 up. And Mo3 had to shoot his way out of our city. Half heck ran out the club, shooting in the air. He was playing. You know, showing out. Like light skinned niggas do. So y'all sad about half heck getting killed. Sound like half heck got himself killed playing gangster. And he wasn't gangster. Shooting in the air and got his motherfucking self killed. Mo3 got killed without a gun, man. They shot Mo3 without a gun. They killed the boy without a gun in Dallas, Texas, in his own hometown by black people. And you got broke-ass niggas in Fort Worth celebrating. Well, guess what? It's some niggas celebrating when they kill Big Worm. And y'all didn't do a motherfucking thing, nigga. It's some, I celebrated when they kill Pee Wee. I celebrate every time the police kill a nigga. We are our own worst enemy, but you know why? Because we are fucked up as a race of people. But they talk that man, the white folks doing the white folks ain't doing us wrong, y'all. Roy Lee was killed by black people. 
Dallas, Texas is killing their stars. And then the other rappers is going to go brag about it like they doing something. Man, you niggas is some real cowards, my nigga. And the white boy ain't our problem. Black people in Fort Worth, Texas is celebrating Mo3 death like Mo3 had half hit killed. Half hit got himself killed playing gangster and tough. Shooting in the air. And got his motherfucking top pop, nigga. Light-skinned nigga shouldn't have been playing. Mo3 them wasn't playing. Mo them had to shoot their way out that motherfucker and half hit got killed. Nigga, that wasn't them people's fault. But y'all want to celebrate this man's death. And I sit back and I look at all the people that's been dying, all these black people. Y'all were just acting like white people was the problem. I thought Donald Trump and them and, and, and white people and the police shootings is the problem. Man, the police didn't kill Mo3. When last time the police done killed somebody, y'all? Do y'all remember the last nigga the police killed? I remember the last nigga got killed, and it wasn't by the police. His name was Marcus Mack. According to the reports, he was just riding down north on 35 in his car, and he was in Oak Cliff. He was in Oak Cliff, the same neighborhood that all them white people went to with the Donald Trump flags, and they stopped right over at Friendship West Baptist Church over there with Pastor Freddie Haynes. And did nobody do none of them white folk when they went over there. I remember when Amber Geiger was going to trial and all the black people in Dallas were saying, man, if she get off, we gonna tear this motherfucker up. We gonna tear this bitch up. And all them niggas was outside of Dallas acting like if Amber Geiger don't get it. It's enough. We sick of this shit. And then that woman got 10 years. Them niggas in Dallas played like they was mad. And everybody around the country just knew Dallas wasn't going to take that shit. That Dallas was going to tear that motherfucking city up when Amber Geiger got 10 years. And guess what them niggas did? Put their thumb in their mouth. And suck they thumb and play like they were mad. That's all they did. They didn't do a motherfucking thing. They didn't do a motherfucking thing. Do y'all remember when that white boy? Y'all remember when that white boy beat up that black girl in Dallas and when he was punching her, boom, he pulled that gun out on her and boom, and he was whooping her and boom, and he uppercut her and broke her jaw and broke her nose. Remember that white boy? Did nobody do none of that white boy? Niggas. Them niggas in Dallas is scared of the Tongo Blast Mexicans. The niggas in Fort Worth is scared of them Diamond Hill and them Tongo Blast and them Latin King Mexicans. Niggas is afraid of Mexicans. When niggas go to the feds, Niggas don't want no problem with them Italian mafia gang members. Niggas don't want no problem with the Irish mob. Niggas don't want no problem with the Chinese mob. Niggas don't want no problem with the Mexican mafia. Niggas don't want no problem with the Setas, the Mexican cartel. The niggas don't want no problem with the motherfuckers out of Tijuana, them Tijuana cartels. Niggas don't want no problem with them Haitians. All niggas feel comfortable with is fighting niggas. They don't want to fight nobody else because we ain't strong enough. It ain't shit to kill a nigga. He already dead anyway. The black boy's the walking dead. It's easy to kill that motherfucker. The bullets is for the revolution. But the black boy wasting all his bullets on his own kind. So when it's time to really fight a war, the black boy go have to surrender. Because he ain't gonna have enough ammunition. He ain't gonna have enough manpower to fight no war for his nation and his race of people. Whoever Yoski Justice is, I don't know who this nigga is. 
But I just logged on Facebook and I saw a guy by the name of Yoski Justice celebrating the death, the death of Mo3. And he say, long live half hit. Well, from what I heard, oh, stupid ass half hit. <laughs> from what I heard, half hit was a dumb, stupid ass nigga who worked the doors in the parking lots at a club. He wasn't too far from a bomb. From what I hear about this guy named Half Hick, I don't know who he is, but from what I hear, Half Hick was a parking lot bomb. A parking lot rat who charged prices to park niggas' cars. He patrolled the parking lot. He was the dough guy. <laughs> a flunky, a dummy, as I would call a nigga working the dope, patting niggas down. So they set Mo3 up at a club. They put him in the back of the club where he's supposed to be performing. They bring some guys out of Fort Worth to jump on Mo3. Everybody knows about this. They lead Mo3 out into a locked, gated area, and Mo3 had to shoot his way out of the club. The niggas in Fort Worth didn't know them niggas in Dallas is just a little bit more gangster. So they had some niggas outside waiting. Them niggas pulled up in that van and bust his boys and them mo three them out. Half heck, want to show out for the crowd. Come out the door just shooting in the air. Paw, 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 paw. He didn't even have to be shooting and got killed. Now these bitch ass niggas in Fort Worth want to play like it's Mo3 fault. Mo3 did exactly what he was supposed to do. By the way, the moment that you do this in life, when you come out your mother's pussy, you go, wah, wah, and you take that first breath. The day for you to cry, or the day for your family to cry when you die, is already set. You can't speed it up. You can't slow it down. So don't trip about dying. Because we all got to go. We all got to die. We just don't know how we're going to leave this motherfucker in which manner that we're going to leave, right? I Meaning how we're going to die. We don't get to pick how we die, but we got to go. So don't be sad about death. One of the greatest things about living, nigga, is dying. It's dying. That's the greatest thing about living. But the best part about living in order to die is what you do in between. See, Mo3 just, he died a rapper. Talking about this, 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 that, this, 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 that. He never got to live a full life that God intends for everybody to live a full life. When you walking in purpose and you living a purpose-driven life, then you live a fulfilled life, right? When you operating inside of God's will and you not <laughs> you live a fulfilled life, right? wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. What's in your heart? The Bible says what's in a man's heart so shall he speak it. So I listen. I listen to what a man talks about. I listen to what a man praises. I listen to what a man worships. And when I listen to a rapper, he ain't entered into the kingdom of God. Mo3 didn't get to enter into the kingdom of God because kingdom of, <laughs> it's heaven on earth, meaning God's kingdom, you can access down here. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, the kingdom of God. Jesus said, repent for the kingdom is at hand. Mm -hmm. Repent for the kingdom is at hand.
So when I look at all these black people who wishes death on other black people, not once have I ever saw any of you niggas wish death on white people. I ain't never seen y'all wish, oh man, I wish white people would die. I ain't never seen a nigga say that. I ain't never seen y'all wish death on the Mexicans. And the Mexicans do you niggas bad in jail. For you niggas just getting out of jail and prison, yo skin. You niggas got to go down there and get along with the Mexicans that's openly racist to you niggas. But y'all don't never complain about that. The Mexicans is openly racist, nigga. More racist than the white boy. But I never, but you niggas will wish death on your own kind. So let me show you why you niggas is cursed. Because the Bible says anytime that you, uh, uh, you dig a ditch for somebody else, you got to be digging too for yourself. Many of you niggas have failed fathers. How can you hate your brother? I've never abandoned my children. I've never left my children. I've never had to go to jail and do no time on my children. I don't. <laughs> God no longer has his hand on black people. How do you know? Look at the conditions. And not only do you look at the conditions, look at the heart of those people in those conditions. And that's how you can tell God no longer has his hand on black people. Our hearts are hardened. Our hearts harbor hate. Uh, our hearts maintain contentment. For, for other people Our hearts Aren't forgiving hearts uh, There's nothing that God can do With today's black people But destroy them Like he did Sodom and Gomorrah It wasn't That the people of Sodom and Gomorrah Was sinning and doing wrong It was what was in their hearts while they were sinning and doing wrong you can't pray you can't pray over your kids and have hope and 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 and, 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 and dream for your children but you wish death on another man and that death will cause pain to his mother and his children and you and another person is standing in agreement. Dre Wright and Yoski Justice are two people that the devil put together where they can stand in an agreement that death will come upon another black man. And then when it come to pass, because the Bible says anytime two or more shall come together, it shall come to pass. And when it came to pass, they honored that. Let's get a bottle and celebrate. Man, one of the first things I saw, I kept receiving messages. Saying, man, Mo3 died. Man, please speak on it. Man, Mo3 died. Can you speak on it? Mo3 died. Can you speak on it? I'm saying, man, why do I need to speak on it? Nigga, I don't give a fuck about no rapper. Rappers got to die. Everything that's outside of the will of God has to be eradicated because it's not a purpose to it. See, I can't be killed. I can't be murdered. I can't be touched. Because I operate under the will of God, facilitating vision and a God-given purpose that I walk in. So I'm purpose-driven, so you can't touch me. But the rappers, the King Vons, all they rap about is death, killing, motherfucker, murder, killing, motherfucker, murder, killing, mother. You trap boy Freddy, motherfucker, kill, motherfucker, murder, motherfucker, kill, motherfucker, murder. King Vaughn. All the stories that he rapped about is talking about killing people. So what does God have to allow happen? You got to reap what you sow, baby. You can't kill people with your words. You can't kill people with your thoughts and in your mind. And think that those seeds don't come back to you. As good of a singer that Mo3 was, he still was a murderous singing rapper. 
They don't give honor and they don't give praise to God. So there's nothing that God can do with a Mo3. There's nothing that God can do with a King Von. There's nothing that God could do with a Dre Wright. There's nothing that God could do with a Yoski Justice. There's nothing that God could do with a, a game. There's nothing that God could do with a T.I. There's nothing that God can do with a young Jeezy. Because if there was, they would be singing God lyrics. They would have God-like actions. They would have a community service mind, a community service heart. These men are in the entertainment industry. These men are in the entertainment industry. God ain't in the entertainment industry. God separates himself from the entertainment industry because you can't serve two masters. You can't serve two masters. You can't sign a music contract. You can't be on side of little Boosie and think God is walking with you. You got to let God go. You got to make a choice now. Do you want a rapper? Or do you want to serve God? Because ain't nothing God can do with a rapper when he rapping. You have to spit, you have to, you have to rebuke God to be a rapper. You have to rebuke God to wish death on your brother. Ain't no, ain't, there's no heart. There's nothing that God can do with a human being that has a wish of death on a brother. There's nothing. There's no blessing. There's, there's only thing God can give you is to wake up and give you a chance to repent. That's the only thing God woke mostly us up for this morning, nigga, is to repent and turn the other way, nigga. Go right so you can go straight. That's the only reason somebody's eyes woke up this morning. God say, I'm going to give you another chance, baby. You don't think... You don't think after you stay down here for so long on earth... You don't think after you stay down here so long on earth... Goddamn, man. I'm going to talk to gangsters. Well, uh, ain't nobody more gangster than God. Man, uh, well, they didn't. He took out running, and they shot from a distance. They didn't chase him down to kill him. He took out running. Oh, he jumped out on freeway. He just, and they shot an innocent person sitting in the car. They were just shooting at him running, homie. But when you born, your date to die is already set. And and, and, and then the cold, and then the colder part. But then the colder part about it, you dying in your sin. You don't, you know, God give you a chance to repent and give your life over to him, except, and nigga, you died in your sin. So, if nothing else, we just watch the boy die in his sin, like the rest of them. Oh, well, it's Friday, I don't, well, that's how you get your land, man. They want to go back to the land, that's how you get your land. Well, uh, but that's that was God, that was God call, homie. See, this is an ongoing thing, that's why we need the money to get funded <laughs> on the news. That's why we need money to get funny. Shit, it's an ongoing thing. Well, we're at the end of we're at the end of the time, homie, and the world coming to an end. Everybody either got to accept Christ and get their life over to Christ. We for to see more people die. We for to see more people die that ain't giving their life to God. That ain't living for Christ. We for to see we, we y'all ain't seen nothing yet. We for to start seeing celebrities die like this here. Reason why we just seeing the rappers. Because the rappers are the devils. God, people win in the end, y'all. So don't y'all forget that. So all the people y'all see dying, notice the old folks ain't dying. Those that's dying is supposed to be dying, y'all. So all that, what we coming to now? Y'all don't remember the gang banging era? The gang banging era had 14 year old kids getting killed, 15 year old kids getting killed, 16 year old kids getting killed. This ain't worse than the gang banging era. So don't y'all try to act like it just done gotten all. This is the end times, everybody. Go to Revelations. If you want to understand what's going on in the world, if you want to understand about the plagues, 
If you want to understand about the famine on the land, the shortage of toilet tissue, the shortage of food, jobs being laid out, the abuse is going up in the homes, the molestation is going up in the home. It's in Revelation. The Bible says in the end time, mothers is going to kill daughters and daughters is going to kill mothers and children is going to kill their parents and parents go going to kill their children. That's in Revelation, y'all. Them, them bees, them Asian bees, them Asian bees that the news been saying that they done come over here and they got these bull, super human-like bees that'll kill you. That's in Revelations. That's all. That's biblical. The three countries coming up against one, that's all in the Bible, baby. I read it when I was a kid. So what y'all seeing, the Bible says those that's a part of God's word, that's operating in God's kingdom, we don't, we don't have to worry about getting killed and shot down in the streets. We don't have to worry about dying from, 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 from coronavirus. We don't have to worry about getting laid off. We don't have to worry about running out of food because God's people is going to prevail and we go, we going to be the one that the world look to in these times. But they, they looking. And what's happening is the world is looking for those people that God say is going to prevail and go. But what's happening, they can't find them. The people that God need to lead the world, the people is looking for them. And they, that, them lights is not shining in such a dark world. So, before the foundation of the world, God already knew today Mo3 was going to die. God knew this at the beginning of the year. We less than 45 days away from the year being gone. And God already know within them 45 days, there's some more people that got to leave this earth. God ain't surprised about none of these people. God is more hurt. God is more hurt at the hearts of a chosen people who have lost they way into the kingdom of God. Black people used to be a chosen people. That's how they were able to endure and, and, and persevere through slavery, through Jim Crow, through Reconstruction, through through the through through the crack era. But something happened in the millennial. Something happened. Satan got a hold. Satan got a hold of the hearts and minds of black people. And they now are in a state of rejection of God and God's word that was given to us by our chosen people. We now reject grandmothers in them prayers say she praying to a white God we now reject our mother's scriptures that she gave us as children that carried us through life that got us through the criminal justice system we now because we now lean on our own understanding we don't read so many books we got so much mis misinformation we got so much indoctrination we got so much persuasion of other people's belief system we now don't know how to access God's spirit and walk in spirit and in truth. We walk in, in knowledge of, 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 of information. We don't walk in truth and we don't walk in spirit, right? We're so bombarded with books and, and, and all this knowledge that we got from another man. We don't connect with God's spirit. To be spirit fueled and spirit fed, we're book fed because we want to understand God. So rather than we want to lean on our own understanding, we don't want God to be a mystery. We want to know God as if we're God so we can be God on earth. That's what we want. We don't want to be servants of God. So when I see and I look back at these black people, 